Back in November, way before the Arch team added that very questionable installer, the Arch team actually did something really, really cool. What they did was added a bunch of accessibility features into the ISO to make it so people who have trouble seeing actually have some chance of being able to install Arch without having to go and do it through something like Arco or Manjaro or something along those lines. And even though I'm about, what, six months late at this point, I have no idea how basically nobody's talked about this, so I guess I should be the one to do it. So a couple of very simple but very major changes were made to the ISO. The first one is, you'll notice that if you go to the boot screen, there's one extra option in here. So we have the Arch Linux install medium, and then Arch Linux install medium with speech. And that is the mode you're going to want to go to if you want to enable the accessibility features. My guess for why it's a separate option is because one of the major features you get would be really, really annoying to have enabled if you didn't actually need it. But I'll get into that in just a moment. Now, one thing you might notice is with the accessibility option, it actually has a highlighted letter. Now, the reason why that's highlighted is because we can actually go and press that key and then it will automatically go and run that option. So regardless of which option we're actually selected on, let's say we go to power off here. If we press S, it will then go and run that mode. So if you accidentally move to a different option, you can always get back to the one you need. And one other little change that was made is when you first open up the ISO, there's going to be a timeout and then it will automatically select the first option. Now, previously that timeout was set to five seconds. Now it's been raised up to 15 seconds, basically to give you enough time to go and select the option you need. Now, I don't know why there's a timeout there altogether because after you move the cursor once, it just disables the timeout. So it would make more sense if there was just no timeout from the start and you just had as much time as you needed to select whatever you wanted. Now in the ISO bootloader, there's not really much else that can be done in the way of accessibility without just going and writing an entirely new bootloader where you could actually build those options in. But at least in the TTY here, there is a little bit that we can go and do. Now, because we are on a TTY, it does limit us to what we're actually capable of doing. However, we still do have access to audio drivers, so we can go and run something like eSpeak perfectly fine, and that's how the screen reader functionality in the Arch ISO is actually working. It's using an application known as eSpeak Up, which is basically a bridge between eSpeak, which is a text-to-speech application, and Speak Up, which is a screen reader. Now, I can't demonstrate this super well inside of VirtualBox because the audio drivers are kind of broken. So I have to like Double. enable stuff and disable stuff and it will work a little bit. But if you're actually running this natively on your system, it'll be working perfectly fine. Everything you type Double. will be read out and everything gets basically printed to the screen will be read out as well. Now, while eSpeak is by no means the clearest text-to-speech out there, and I'm sure if they wanted to go and find something else, they could find something with a much more natural sounding voice. What it does do is get the job done. So here's a better demonstration of eSpeak just running regularly on my system. Hello world, this is a demonstration of eSpeak. It's not amazing, but it should be good enough. Obviously, not the clearest thing out there, but you should still be able to understand what's actually being said. Now, eSpeak Up isn't something that was made specifically for the Arch ISO. If you need to run it on your system, you can just go and install it and run it as you please. Now, there is a page, I believe, on the Arch Linux wiki on how to actually set it up. If you're running Ulsa, it should just work perfectly fine out of the box. But with Pulse Audio, getting eSpeak to actually work is a little bit fiddly. Pipewire does address this, though. And also, if you have multiple sound cards, it can also be a bit fiddly to deal with as well. Now, on the note of multiple sound cards, if you do have more than one installed while you're actually trying to install Arch, when you first open up the accessibility options, it should prompt you to select which one you actually want to use. Now, I'm not able to test this myself, so I can't exactly confirm how well it works, but hopefully that does work fine. If it doesn't prompt you, I guess just unplug one of the sound cards and just go with whatever works. Now, a screen reader is all well and good, and I'm sure for a lot of people, that would basically get the job done. But this also comes with something else really, really cool as well. And that is Braille TTY, which is a driver for a Braille display. Now, if you're anything like me, you probably had no idea what a Braille display actually is. So it turns out... This makes a lot of sense, but what you can do is take what you see on your screen and then convert it into Braille and then display it on this thing that just changes as you actually have different Braille you encounter. I had no idea that this device existed, but 
This is really, really cool. What this device lets you do is effectively read your screen as you would read like a braille sign or a braille book. I think this is really cool. It's not a, like a new technology by any means. This video is nine years old and I'm sure these have been around for way longer, but I just didn't know these existed. But especially because the eSpeak text-to-speech isn't really that clear, or maybe you have hearing issues as well, having this as another way to actually read your screen, I think is really, really useful to have. Now, as you may be able to expect from something so specialized, these are by no means cheap. I believe this one in particular is about 2000 or so dollars. So for obvious reasons, I don't have one to test how well the driver actually works. Plus, even if I did have one, I would have no idea if it was working well because I can't actually read Braille. Now, if you were to plug one of these in via USB, it should just be automatically detected by UDEV and just magically start working. I'm genuinely surprised that a channel like, say, Linus Tech Tips hasn't actually done a video on one of these in the past. Now, even if you do install Arch via the accessibility mode, it won't actually install the extra packages you need to make sure those accessibility options continue to work once you actually get to your Arch desktop. So what I would recommend doing while you're actually going through the regular Arch install guide is going and checking out the install Arch Linux with accessibility options, which is basically a page that describes the extra steps you'll need alongside the regular install guide. So this includes things like if you have multiple sound cards, how do you actually go and update your A sound RC to make sure you're actually using the one you set up in the ISO or what other packages you need to set up to make sure that things like eSpeak Up actually work. This should probably also be mentioning the fact that eSpeak just straight up doesn't work with Pulse Audio out of the box. I know that's more of a general eSpeak issue rather than eSpeak Up issue and running Pulse Audio isn't actually essential but most people on a Linux desktop are running Pulse Audio so at least having a link to the eSpeak page on the Arch Wiki probably wouldn't be the worst idea. If you're curious who's responsible for getting the base work done for these accessibility features, that honor goes out to the talking Arch devs. Their whole project was based around taking the vanilla Arch ISO and just making it so someone with vision issues actually has any ability to use it whatsoever. Now, this project hasn't really been getting worked on for quite a while, so the latest version of it was back in 2017, so I'm guessing they're no longer working on the project. But these features were really, really useful, so Alexander Epanishnikov, I'm sorry, I completely butchered your name, he's responsible for actually taking this project and getting it merged in the regular Arch ISO. And that's a far more convenient way to handle it anyway, because if you're relying on a separate ISO like this, you have to rely on the team actually going and updating it. And as we can see here, it's sort of been left bare. Now, technically, you could still install a 2017 version of Arch and then update it all the way to the latest version. You might break everything, but because you've just installed it, it shouldn't be that bad, I hope, but now you don't actually need to do that. This isn't a feature set that I ever hope I need to use. However, for the people who actually do need it, this is really, really cool because prior to having something like Talking Arch available and now with the accessibility features, there was no way for you to actually install the Arch ISO unless you could actually read the screen. While you could maybe make the argument that the Arch team should just do away with the TTY installation being their main installation and do something like Ubuntu has, we have these nice fancy GUIs that still have accessibility options, but it does away with all of the complicated commands you need to run, which would simplify the process as well. That isn't the direction I think the Arch team is ever going to go, so if we're going to be working with the ISO as it is, something like this is really useful to have and probably should have been here years ago. Speaking of things that should have happened years ago, you should have been using Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or even a personal VPN, there'll be one that fits you. I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size. Right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. Let me know your thoughts on all of this down below in the comment section. So I think that's going to be everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special 
special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andre Nathan, David Will, Brennan Chico Bento, Jamie Joseph, uh, Josh Mitchell, Peter the Seven, Thero, Tony Tushar, and all of my two dollar supporters. If you'd like to support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sub, Libra Pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, where I very rarely talk about tech. And there's sometimes tea. Check that out basically anywhere. I've also got this channel available over on Odyssey if you like to watch my content on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me and...